Okay, time's up. My name is Alberto Gomez. I am from Madrid, Spain, and uh, this is the presentation I want to give to you, how I contributed the transactionality in one replication feature to Apache Yield. This is the agenda we're going to follow today. First, some words of introduction about myself and also some Apache Yield background, just in case you are new to Apache Yield, so that you, ha you can have some context about the presentation. And then we'll jump into the, into, the, into the meat of the presentation. In the first part, I will talk about the technical description of the feature, this transactionality in one replication feature. I will first talk about uh, the use case that drove me to, to implement this into Apache Geo. And later, I will give you details. I will sketch the solution I devised to, to fix this problem we found in Apache Geo. In the second part of the presentation, I will guide you through the process I followed to contribute the, the code into Apache Geo from the point of view of someone which uh, was quite new in the community. OK, so a little bit about myself. I am a software senior software engineer working at Ericsson Software Technology. Uh, this company is, uh, is the uh, open source division of Ericsson. I've been a software engineer for more than 23 years, uh, working in the telco industry. <clears throat> the last years, I've been mainly focused in data management solutions for core network systems in Ericsson. And just lately, like uh, about one year and a half ago, I started to work with Apache Geode. And the reason was that uh, some of Ericsson's uh, core network systems were using Apache Geode. Uh, we were in, in our company, we decided to create a team in order to support uh, our applications using Apache Geode. Okay, uh, some background Apache, about Apache Geode. If you attended the previous presentation, you'd be better off because, uh, because you already had a, an introduction about Apache Geode. Mine is going to be much shorter, but I will give it to you just in case you were not present in the previous one. So what is Apache Geode? It's hard to define it in, in, in not so many words. This is what you find in the, in the web page. Apache Geode is a data management platform that provides a database-like consistency model, reliable transaction processing, and a shared nothing architecture to maintain very, very low latency performance with high concurrency processing. Uh, below, you can see in this figure, um, I would say the main components of an Apache Geo cluster. In the top part, you can see the server farm. Uh, you have a, a set of servers or cache servers. That's another name that it's given to them. And these are the elements hosting the data. Data can be distributed, partitioned, and uh, can be also, data is always in memory, but you can also um, persist the data on disk. Below the servers, you can see uh, cache clients. These are the clients connecting to the servers to get the data or to put data on the servers. Uh, they connect to the servers using a connection pool. At the, right, at the right hand, you can see the locator. Locator is a very important component in the Apache Geo architecture. Uh, locators provide um, discovery service to the clients so that the clients uh, can then, once they connect to the locators, they can find where the servers are running. And also locator provide, locators provide also load balancing of, of servers because they, they are aware of the load of each server. An interesting feature that Apache Geo provides is a multi-site or one deployment. What are these? Uh, well, uh, Apache Geo allows to have several um, Geo clusters connected via a wide area network and which are kept in sync um, via asynchronous replication. Uh, there are two elements that provide, two elements in the Apache Geo architecture that provide the, this functionality, which are the gateway receivers and gateway senders. Gateway senders run in cache servers, and they are the elements in charge of sending 
events generated inside uh, the server in which they are running to the remote site. And in the remote site, the gateway receiver is the one, the element in charge of receiving events from the from the other side in order to keep both sides in sync. Okay, that was the very short uh, introduction about Apache Geode. Now let's uh, jump into the main parts of the presentation. Let's go to the first part, the technical description of this functionality I implemented, transactionality in one replication. And first I want to talk to you about the use case. Um, in our company, uh, our systems uh, make use of this uh, one replication feature because most of our systems are geographically uh, redundant and they require to, to keep uh, systems uh, separated geographically to keep them in sync. This is how a one replication works in, in Geode. As I said before, uh, gateway senders and gateway receivers are the components uh, providing this uh, functionality. And so when you configure one replication in Apache Geode, this is what happens. Every time there is a create, update, or delete operation in one of the clusters, an event is created. If, um, if the operation is inside a transaction, then one event is created for, for each operation in the transaction. Then each event generated is put in a gateway sender queue. After that, events are read from the queue and they are added to batches. And then batches are completed either when, when one of these two conditions is met, either when the configured batch uh, size is reached or when the configured time for a batch is elapsed. And once the batch is completed, the gateway sender sends it to the remote site. Okay, this is how a uh, transactionality wo uh, works. Uh, sorry, this is how one replication works in Apache Geode. But uh, looking at this um, behavior, we found a problem. And the problem is the following. Under network splits, transactional consistency cannot be guaranteed. Why is this? Well, the reason is that events for the same transaction may be split across different batches. So if we send some um, events for one transaction in one batch, then we have a network split. Then uh, on the remote side, we will not have all the events for a transaction. I mean, not all the events for this transaction will be applied on the remote side. If the split lasts for a long time, that could cause some trouble to the clients connected to the remote side. Let me illustrate this with, uh, with this figure. Let me explain uh, what I've just told you before uh, with this figure. Let's imagine we have two geode sites connected via a uh, wide area network, one, one site uh, in North America and another one in Europe. We have this geode site, uh, which has three clients connected to it. And we have this other site with two clients connected to it. Uh, this uh, cloud here represents uh, the cache servers hold, hosting the data. This is uh, one piece of data, object X, for example, which is hosted in, in this site. And as you can see, uh, this same object is also hosted in the other site because these two sites are kept in sync by the one replication feature. Okay, now let's imagine that the clients start to send operations to, to site one. The first client is going to execute a transaction involving three objects, objects A, B, and C. Uh, the second client is going to also execute a transaction involving uh, three objects, D, E, and F. And the third client is going to also execute an, an operation. It's going to actually create an object, but it's not inside a transaction. Okay, once uh, those uh, clients execute their operations, we can see that the DGO cluster is now hosting those data, those objects that have just been created. And let's see how one replication works in this case. So as I told you before, for every uh, operation in, in a cluster, when one replic replication is uh, configured, uh, an event is created and it is stored in the gate, uh, gateway sender queue. So we're going to have one event for each of these operations executed in, in this uh, cluster. So we'll have, again, we'll see uh, event for object A, event for object D, B, C, E, G, 
and F. Okay, so the, as you can see, the queue is being filled after the events have been generated. And then at the same time, this is all happening concurrently. At the same time, batches will be created by reading uh, events from the gateway sender queue. So as this is a queue, the first event to be read from the queue will be the first one pushed inside the queue, which was event for operation A. But after that, the next events will be read from the queue. Until when? Well, until the batch is complete. This example, I have, uh, I am assuming that the length configured for batches is five, five elements. So in this case, the batch is complete. So what we would expect after this is that uh, the batch will be sent to the other side. Okay, this is what, what is going to happen. Batch is sent to the other side. The gateway sender is going to send a batch uh, to the to the site on the on the other side, uh, and the gateway receiver will receive this batch and will apply it into the geo cluster. So we will have all these events in the in the batch now in the cluster. Okay, once the events have been applied, the original batch can be deleted and then a new batch can be created with the rest of events. So far, so good. Okay, now let's see what, what could happen if we have a network split at this point. If we have a network split at this point, uh, this will provoke that we will not be able to send any more batches until the network is resumed. This should be a big problem if these clients um, are not very, do not rely very much on consistency, do not rely so much uh, about having the data um, very fast from the other side. But what could happen if uh, this uh, network split uh, lasts for a long time? In this case, these clients are going to see, are going to have an inconsistent view of the system. Why am I saying this? Well, I'm saying this because here, uh, objects D, E, and F were created inside a transaction. That means that the creation of those three objects uh, shouldn't be done uh, independently. And what these clients are seeing is they are seeing object D and E, but without an object F. If this uh, situation lasts for a long time, maybe these clients are not going to know how to handle the situation. If the situation is short, maybe they can do some retries or, I don't know, uh, send back some errors, some temporary errors. But if the situation is long, this is going to, to be provoking problems uh, in the clients on this side. And this is actually a problem in the applications uh, we have in, in, in our company, in Ericsson, the ones using Apache Geo, they cannot tolerate uh, inconsistent views for a long time. And also the applications we, we, we have on top of Apache Geo do a lot of um, transactional writings. So this could be a very frequent situation. Okay, so, this is the problem we faced uh, when we looked uh, at the documentation about how Apache Geode work. And also when we ran some tests, we saw that this could happen. So we thought about um, providing a solution inside Apache Geode to this problem. And this is the solution we, we devised. We thought about other alternatives, but this was the one that we thought was the best and without the uh, least impact to the system. And the solution consisted of the following. We would have to make sure that events for the same transaction would be sent in the same batch. How would we do this? Well, this would be the procedure. Once a batch is completed, due to either a size has been reached or the time has been reached, instead of sending the batch immediately, we are going to do the following. We're going to look at all the events inside the batch and check for those events that are inside the transaction, if all the events for that transaction are inside the batch. If not, if not all the events for a transaction are inside the batch, what we are going to do is go to the queue and read those missing events from the transaction and put them in the queue. And sorry, and put them in the batch. Now the point, the question would be: how do we know if a batch contains all the events for a transaction? Uh, in order to do that, we are going to use these two mechanisms. For once, uh, we know 
because this is uh, how Apache Geode work. Transaction events uh, are marked are marked with the transaction ID. So once we go through the event uh, inside a batch, we can know for each event to which transaction it belongs because because each event is marked with a transaction ID. And something we are going to add to the events is a flag which would tell us if the event is the last event for for the transaction. And this is going to allow us to to achieve uh, our goal to avoid this problem in transactionality uh, in one replication, replication in one replication. Let me explain this to you with the with the same figure we used before. Let's suppose we are in the same situation as before. Um, we had the three clients that executed this uh, of these transactions and also this creation of object G. And we are at this point. We have the batch complete, same same situation. But now instead of sending sending the batch, we are going to do the check. We're going to look at all the events and we, we are going to ask ourselves, is there any incomplete transaction? I don't know if you can see it, but now uh, some of the events are in bold. That's the way I am telling you that the events in bold, in, in bold font are the ones uh, below, are the ones which are the last uh, for their transaction. So in this case, if we go uh, through this event and look, for example, at event A, okay, event for operation A, it belongs to a transaction. So we need to look at the other events and see if all the events for the transaction are in. And as we see that event for operation C is inside and this is the last event for that transaction, we can be sure that all the events for the transaction blue are inside the batch. So we are okay for the events in the blue transaction. But what happens with the events in green? We have this event, we have this event, but we don't have the last transaction event for, tra for the green transaction. So that means that we have uh, the green transaction incomplete. If we send it to the other side, we will run the risk of applying an incomplete transaction if we have a network split right after we apply this batch. So what we do, is we are going to go to the queue and read mini and get all the events, all the missing events for the green transaction. In our case, we only have one event in the queue for the green transaction, and that event is the last one for, for this transaction. So in this case, we do not have any more uh, incomplete transactions in the batch. So we are safe, and now we can send the batch to the other side. This is what we are going to do. We send the batch to the other side. The batch is applied in the remote cluster. Um, another uh, batch will be created uh, out of the queue. But what happens now if we uh, have a network split situation? And if that situation longs, uh, lasts for some, for some time? In this case, we, these clients do not have to worry about having an inconsistent view because all these um, events belonging to a transaction were applied. We don't have an incomplete uh, view of the system anymore. It's true that we don't have uh, this uh, event yet, but that doesn't mean that we, ha we have an uh, inconsistent uh, view of the system because the ENF should be applied in, in, in the site, should be applied in, in geode uh, atomically in our transaction. So uh, this is the situation. This is the solution we we designed to to fix this problem. Here are some implementation miscellaneous the implementation details. Uh, we had to implement have a different implementation for serial and parallel gateway senders. I haven't talked about uh, the different types of gateway senders that Apache Dio offers, but uh, there are two types and as the queue implementation was different for, for the two of them, implementation also for, for this feature had to be a little different. Another detail which is, uh, uh, which is uh, interesting is that the feature was uh, created to be configurable. It's not something that it's always there. 
but you have to activate it on a per gateway sender basis using a special setting that we created, this group transaction event setting. And some limitations. I mean, uh, this solution is not uh, perfect and it doesn't work for all cases. Uh, one limitation it has is that the gateway senders with this feature must replicate the same set of regions involved in, in transactions. Mm. If you are using serial gateway senders, uh, you can you have to have just one dispatcher thread. You cannot have a, a gate, serial gateway sender with more than one dispatcher thread because that would mess up the ordering of, of events and that would uh, imply that we cannot know uh, which is the last event in the transaction and so on and the feature would not work. Another limitation is, as you have seen, uh, you can configure a maximum size of the batch. In our case, it was five, but this value, which prior to this uh, implementation could not be surpassed now with this feature, sometimes you can have batches with a bigger size than the one configured. And also another limitation, maybe maybe looking at the looking at the title of this presentation, uh, you would think that uh, I have implemented uh, distributed transactions across uh, a, a wide area network, but this is not the case. I mean, uh, we are solving just the problem I described before. So when the when the batch is applied on the remote side, transactions are not applied. So if due to a crash or a bug in the code, uh, not all the events in a transaction are applied, that cannot be controlled by this by this feature. Okay, this is pretty small. Uh, this is just to give you a glimpse of a um, dimension of this change. I don't know if you can see it here, but uh, I had to change uh, 51 files uh, and touch about or change about uh, 3,000 lines of code. Uh, yeah, and that's it about uh, the technical part of, of this presentation. Now I want to talk about uh, the same thing, but from a very different perspective. And this is from the perspective of uh, someone which is uh, quite new to the community and wants to uh, contribute some code to the Apache Geo project. And I want to, uh, to guide you through the steps I followed, uh, just in case you are thinking about um, jumping in, in the community and, and pushing code so that you can see what steps I followed and, what problems I ran into, and I mean, in, in general, how how smooth the process was. Okay, so these are the steps I followed. First, the investigation, investigation of, of the problem, then write an RFC, then write a Jira ticket, then implement the changes, and then create a pull request. Uh, there is a, a wiki page, in the Apache Geode uh, page, in which you can look at the developer workflow in which most of these steps are, are described. Okay, the investigation. What did I do in that step? Well, I looked at the geo code, I looked at the geo documentation to really understand how one replic replication worked. And uh, at, that, um, at that phase is when I realized that we, in our systems, in the systems we, we designed at our company, based on a, uh, an Apache Geode, we had a problem that we had to fix. Um, what did we do uh, in order to fix it? Well, we built some prototypes, some proofs of concept of several solutions we thought of in order to fix this problem, because there were uh, several approaches we could take to fix uh, this problem, although we finally selected the one I described. OK, once we finished the investigation process uh, that we had more or less clear uh, what we wanted to fix and how to do it, we could have just jumped uh, into um, contributing the code into the community, whatever uh, the process it was. But uh, the Apache Geode community uh, approved or uh, proposed some, some time ago uh, an RFC lightweight process which was a process um, um, proposed to help in the this in the um, uh, when 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 making decisions technical decisions a process to help uh, make decisions and to reach consensus 
So, uh, what does this process consist of? Well, it's very simple. There is an RFC template which you have to fill in. This is a, a screenshot of the, of the RFC I wrote uh, using the, the template. And in that RFC, you have to describe the problem, describe the solution you are proposing at a high level. If possible, describe some use cases, the problem. Um, there are some other things you have to add into this uh, document. For example, if there are impacts in regards to backward compatibility, if there are impacts in the public APIs, and uh, some other stuff. So what you do is you write this RFC, you publish it in the wiki page of Apache Geode, where the RFCs are stored, and you put a deadline to receive comments. Um, normally, you should uh, put a deadline that allows uh, reviewers to some reasonable time to to provide comments. Uh, I, I think in my case it was two weeks, but I had to extend it because uh, maybe two weeks is not so much with with people that are very busy. But uh, okay, you publish the RFC, you receive comments, uh, you answer them, you adjust the RFC. And uh, once uh, the RFC, once you feel the RFC has reached some consensus, um, you 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 see that either in the wiki page where some comments are put, or also in the development list where the RFC is discussed, then you go to the next step. And that's what I did. And the next step is to create a Jira ticket. Everything you put inside Apache Geode uh, must be related to a Jira ticket either a task or a bug fix. So in my case, I created a Jira explaining uh, what I was going to implement. And uh, I got a number, this Geode 7971, which is important because it would be used in the next step of, the, of this uh, process. Next step. OK, now let's go into implementing the changes. If it's the first time you are going to implement changes in Apache Geode, you need, of course, to fork the Apache Geode mirror on GitHub. You need to clone the Apache Geode uh, repository locally. And you, you need to add your fork as an additional remote, because when you push changes, you will be doing it to your, uh, to your fork. I told you before that uh, the number I got from Jira was important, because there I got a number. And uh, in the Apache Geode process, you have to um, when you push some change, you have to do it in a branch called feature slash the name of the Jira task. So you have to create your feature branch with the number of the Jira task assigned. Then you do your commit, you modify the code, you are the, the things you have to add and change in the code to make this work. Of course, you have to take very seriously the documentation. And in this case, it was important because it was a new feature which had a new setting. So you had to really explain how it worked and how to activate it. And of course, tests were very important. It's not just about uh, fixing the problem, but you need to verify that nothing has been broken and also that the, the feature work, works as expected. And, I mean, Apache Geo has lots of, lots of tests. So in my case, I also had to write uh, unit tests and distributed tests and integration tests. You have to run the tests, of course, make sure that everything is running OK. And then finally, push the code to GitHub. And the last step is the pull request. Um, once you push your changes to GitHub, you have to create a pull request. This is a very common process in, I don't know if it's uh, universal in, in Apache project, uh, but uh, you have to create this pull request. There's a web page in GitHub with you can create uh, the pull request out of the last uh, last change you pushed. And once you have uh, your pull request, now you it's time for you to look for reviewers. You need people to review your code, to give you comments and approve it if it's OK. Or uh, if things are not OK, you have to review your code, make new commits, push the changes until Everything is okay from the point of view of the reviewers. 
you need, in, in this case, you need the approval of the two committers in, in the community. And once you get the approval, once all the changes are okay from the point of view of the reviewers, the merge, I mean, the pull request, the code can be merged into the developer branch of, the, of Apache Guild. And that's also done by Apache Guild committers. So that would be the end of the contributor contribution process, but maybe you are not done yet. Sometimes um, you run into surprises, like uh, it was in my case. Sometimes after some days or some weeks, uh, you get a ticket or you get an email from someone telling you that there are some tests, uh, the, the tests that are, that are run in the, in the CI pipeline, which uh, sometimes are failing. There are some flaky tests and they have been caused by your latest, by, I mean, not by your latest, but by, by the introduction of your feature. So it's time for you to investigate those flakiness and uh, fix it. So in my case, I I had to fight with, with a couple of test cases. It took me several days because it was a, a hard problem. So even though I thought I was uh, I was done previously, I had to really finish this up. This uh, I have to tell you, these tests weren't failing when when I pushed the code, weren't failing in my local test, but were failing from time to time, not very often. And that's something I, I couldn't uh, realize at the moment I pushed the changes, but that, that came later. Also, if there are future issues with, uh, with your feature, well, it's normal that sometimes you have to, to assume that uh, you will be assigned to them because uh, you know that feature better than, than others. And uh, last, uh, just to share you uh, some miscellaneous thoughts about the contribution process. You might be wondering how long did it take me to implement this feature? It was about, I don't, I don't know, maybe two and a half months or three months. It's probably a lot, but uh, I mean, uh, I was quite new and, and the uh, Apache Geode is not simple. And also I have to say that uh, sometimes um, the reviews take, take time because uh, uh, the RFC reviews took some time because sometimes you, you need people to to give you comments, but they are busy. And once they read your, your description in the RFC, maybe it's not so clear and you need more clarifications. So, so the review cycles sometimes got a bit long, although it was very fruitful, of course. And also re the review of the code. Uh, you push your code and you create a pull request, then you have to find reviewers. Uh, sometimes reviewers do not jump in. Uh, Autonomously, you have to ask for them in the in the list, and if uh, there's no people with their time, you have to wait. And once uh, the the people get some time to review your code, uh, maybe things are not so quick so quick as you would expect. We work in different time zones sometimes, so that's one of the reasons that sometimes changes take longer than you expected. And the last one, the last thing I wanted to share with you was. Okay, you also might be wondering, okay, you finally uh, finished a feature, you are done, you put it, I mean, you managed to merge it into the uh, develop branch. So when that will be, when will that uh, feature be available in an uh, official uh, geo release? In my case, when I started to develop this feature, uh, the official release was Apache Geo 1.12. So I was expecting that, uh, my feature, this feature would make it into 113, but um, 113, uh, I mean, uh, when I finished it, the branch for uh, the bug fix, bug fix uh, well, no, the branch for 113 was already cut, so my feature could not make it, make it into 113, so we're going to have to wait until 114 to have this feature in place. And this is all I wanted to share with you. Um, just a summary. Uh, I shared with you this uh, functionality I implemented in Apache Geo, transactionality in one replic replication. And in the second part, I wanted to share with you the process I followed as a new person in the Apache Geo community to, to implement changes in, in the system. 
thank you very much for listening to me. And now if you have any questions, I will try to gather them in the chat and answer them if there are. I see a question from Evaristo Camarero. He is asking me, asking me about performance impacts of the feature. Um, the thing is, we have not measured, uh, at least me, have not measured the, the performance impacts of the feature. I can tell you that there would be impacts because uh, if, uh, if you have to wait to send a batch to, to analyze a batch to see if there are missing events in the transaction, and if there are, you have to go to the queue and get pick elements from the queue, but not in the natural way because queues are, are I mean, the, the nature of queues is to push and pop elements. But in our case, we have to uh, extract elements selectively and that could take some time. But we have not um, measured uh, the impact, sorry. So I'm afraid we'll have to wait for for our colleagues in Ericsson making use of this feature to tell us if uh, if this has really been a problem in terms of performance. Let's see if I have any more feature, I mean, any more questions. Let me see. I see one from Diane Hartman. What if the batch, what if the batch size limit prevents you from adding missing transaction events? Yeah. Uh, well, I think I answered that. Uh, we are, um, I mean, we are really overriding the the batch size limit. In our case, sometimes we we go over it for the sake of uh, sending complete transaction events. If the time elapses before all transaction events are in the sender queue, we wait. But, well, actually, we don't wait. We, what we do is we go to the queue, get the missing event, and then send. We we don't wait any longer. Uh, impact if you, if you no longer make that. Another question from Diane Hartman. Would also be good to understand impact to queue size if you no longer own the batch size limit. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. I, um, I'm afraid if um, if you don't add too many elements in the queue, uh, extra elements, I mean, elements above the, the queue size, you would be safe. But uh, I would have to check if there is any any limit in adding extra events to the to the batch if you have set a given limit. So good question, but sorry, I have no answer right now for you. Any more questions? Let's see. Okay, I guess no more questions. So it's uh, seven thirty three. Mm, let's finish this up. Thanks again for joining. And if you want to get in touch with me, you can use my Twitter uh, ID. See you.